And as the largest AAPI chamber, as the second largest AAPI chamber in the country, APAC, I know, has made an incredible business and community impact that has contributed to this state's economy. So I'd like to spend a couple minutes with you tonight talking to you about a, a number of very important issues to the AAPI community. And importantly, I'm going to make a call to action. So I'm going to ask you now, are you, are you with me? Are you willing to take on my call of action? Good, because you haven't heard it yet, so I'm taking names. For sure, the theme of tonight's event, a metamorphic journey, is really quite fitting, not only in terms of what we've already experienced as a community, but what we need to do going forward to transform ourselves into a forceful presence in this country and to realize our awesome potential. For me, the metamorphic journey is not finished. There are more steps that we need to take. A couple weeks ago, my family and I went to a restaurant to celebrate my mother's 77th birthday. We went to an Italian restaurant, um, and we were seated at a table next to a family of four. And as we have become accustomed to throughout our lives, the family of four stopped eating, froze, and stared at us, wondering, what are they going to do? Do they eat with knives and forks? as if to say that maybe they were waiting for us to pull chopsticks out of our bags and eat with those. They speak such good English. So we ignored them and sat down and smiled. And the one man at the table decided to approach us and he said in a very loud, booming voice, I am so glad that you people come to our American restaurants to eat our food especially since your food is so delicious. There were many things that went through my mind. And maybe that's the real reason I broke my hand. I'll never tell, because I want Reggie to sell me a car at a good price. But apparently, people who look like us could not possibly be from here. Even though America is a country that was founded by immigrants and children of immigrants, and even though Asian American history goes back to the 1800s in this country, we are still the chronic foreigners. I used to be resentful about who I was. I mean, while other kids were out playing and hanging out, God forbid, doing nothing, I was working at my parents' businesses. I grew up fast. But what I learned during those years inadvertently was how to be responsible, self-sufficient, reliable. I learned to manage through chaos. I learned to multitask. I learned to organize people and things. And growing up with parents who were stigmatized because they don't look like they're from here and for whom English is a second language meant bearing witness to discrimination, racism, and intolerance. They never complained. They simply endured. To do nothing for them and my family would have meant accepting these conditions. If not me, who? If not now, when? I learned to challenge the status quo, to never be satisfied with the way things are and to make things better. I learned how to be an advocate for my family, my parents, my community. I often accompanied my father when he was helping other Asian immigrants. Sound familiar, anybody? I helped them apply for a job, get registered for a school, rent an apartment, buy a house. I was my family's spokesperson, and from this I learned the powerful tool of communication. I'm also really skilled at thinking outside the box, you know, because when you're an outsider, you really know what's on the outside. I had no family connections to get me into the right schools. My father's friends couldn't meet, get me a job at a big company. My success had to be homegrown and my knowledge self-taught. So many times I've had to figure out how to get inside from outside, how to navigate around barriers, coming up with different ways to do things. 
My message to you is we need to be fully aware that the richness of our cultures and our families and our experiences confer on us great opportunities and advantages that can translate into business and life success. Our young people need to understand what being Asian American really means when put into practice. While we're always the foreigner, at the same time, we've earned the status, and some think it's lofty, of the model minority. The model minority myth suggests, as written in a Time Magazine article, quote, through steely work ethic and quiet perseverance, Asian Americans are uniformly triumphant despite prejudice. But pondering the concept of the model minority, I ask myself, a model for whom? AAPIs comprise the fastest growing population in the, in the US, experiencing four times the growth of the general population in America. Our population is expected to double to more than 47 million by 2060. The majority of Asians in America, which is 66%, are foreign born, so we remain largely an immigrant community. According to a recent Nielsen report, our spending power has expanded from 718 billion to 770 billion in 14, and is expected to be $1 trillion in the next year. That's a lot of greenbacks. We have millions of business with, businesses with total receipts of hundreds of millions of dollars. We employ, we employ countless millions of employees. All of this progress despite the fact that we're under 6% of the population. As a group, we're better educated, we have higher incomes, we over index in the use of the internet. I know that because we sell that. We engage in e-commerce more than any other group. You need the internet for that. See me, Comcast is the best internet provider in the country. We are early adopters of technology. We spend liberally on most major consumer goods and services. But a closer look at us reveals a more complex picture. As a group, we're also disproportionately plagued by poverty, violence, and illiteracy. Our aggregated numbers hide many socioeconomic issues that daunt us. While some of us on, in, in the Asian ethnic groups over-index on education, a significant number of our ethnic groups under-index in terms of education level of the white population. While as a group our income is high, there are intra-group differences, larger family sizes, and a predominance of AAPIs living in more expensive areas of the country that skew the income number high. Whereas Indian Americans and Chinese Americans earn higher income than whites, other ethnic Asian ethnic groups have significantly lower income than whites. While we have some of the highest income in the country, we also have some of the highest rates of poverty. Whereas 10.4% of whites live in poverty, 16.1% of AAPIs live in poverty. 16.1%. This duality is largely unknown. The model mi minority myth may sound like a compliment. We're smart, we're hardworking, we don't need any help, we're self-reliant. But it dangerously obscures the diversity of our cultures, experiences, and challenges, and it's used to put down other people of color. Importantly, this myth takes us completely out of the diversity dialogue. Indeed, we are hidden in plain sight, which is the title of an important study that was done on Asian Americans in Silicon Valley tech companies by Ascend, a nonprofit organization of business professionals. This study is very important because if you've noticed in the recent coverage on the lack of diversity in Silicon Valley, Noticeably absent is any mention of Asian Americans. To Silicon Valley, there's no diversity problem because there's a lot of us there. Ascend conducted a study of Google, Hewlett Packard, Intel, LinkedIn, and Yahoo and concluded that while Asian men and women are well represented in non-managerial work, worker workplace, they are severely underrepresented in executive levels. Our overall numbers are strong. We're 17% of technology companies, but we're not progressing professionally, and we are excluded from the conversations about diversity and hence the programs that would help diversity. So there's lots of us, but we're not going anywhere, and there's no pro programs to help us. So here's some facts from the study. 
Although there are nearly as many Asian professionals as white professionals in most of these five companies, white men and women are 154% more likely to be an executive compared to their Asian counterparts. The stats for Asian women, by the way, are worse. The Asian effect is 3.7 times worse than the gender effect as a glass ceiling factor. So what we need to do is cultivate a pipeline of leadership in the public and private sectors and find ways to activate the pipeline as these organizations look for new leaders. And while we're the model minority, we're also the chronic foreigner. And the public debate on immigration should trouble us. We are in an environment of rhetoric that is hostile to immigration and immigrants. In this environment, we need a strong political voice. We need to be at the table when issues that have impact on our communities are being considered. Turning to politics, the facts show there's a gap in our political power. We're sorely underrepresented in politics, where policies are set and important decisions for our communities, our businesses, and our families are made. 1% of state legislators are AAPI. 2.6% of members of Congress are AAPI, and 6% of governors are AAPI. But the good news is that there are Asian Americans running for political office more than ever. According to a study done by APIA Vote, there are 4,000 Asian American and Pacific Islander elected officials and appointees from 38 states. And recent years have shown an incredible surge of those running for elected office. So what does this all mean? More than ever as a community with thriving Asian-owned businesses and strong population growth, we need to be civically and politically engaged. We need to increase our voting presence. Only 5% of our community votes. 5%. Do you think that's good enough? We need to run for office. We need to support Asians who are running for office. As we increase our political presence, we will increase our political power. And with increased political power, we can best serve the interests of our community and businesses. We will have a voice. I'm the chair of the board of the Asian Pacific American Institute for Congressional Studies, or APACS. And by the way, our gala is next Wednesday in Washington, DC, and President Obama will be our keynote speaker. It's, it's an honor to have the president attend. This is an organization worthy of your partnership because their mission is to promote political involvement and engagement of AAPIs. We need to work together to activate our community to register to vote, to show up at the polls, to run for office, to support our candidates, and to be engaged in the political process. We need to grow our political power as we have grown our economic power. Think of what President Obama has done to launch the dreams of so many African American young people. We need role models for our young people because you can't be what you can't see. We need to instill in our AAPI youth that they too can aspire to be the next President of the United States. I urge you to support robust diversity programs at the companies that serve your communities in every area of public and private sectors. Diversity is not just a nice to have, it's good for business. At Comcast, we have a strong commitment to diversity focused on many areas like procurement, workforce, programming, governance, community investment. We've got an external council that advises us on how we can be a better company we, are ha we have leaders that are committed to embedding diversity into everything we do, not doing diversity when we have the time and inclination to do it. We also sponsor a lot of mentorship programs for young people. Um, and in particular, we have a program that is run by LEAP, Leadership Education for Asian Pacifics, that train Asian American colleagues, employees at Comcast NBCU to stay true to our cultural values but to reframe them in a way that will make us successful. The more we encourage our young people to recast our cultural values into opportunities for success, the better we set them up to become leaders. When I was a young professional, my boss found out that I was a runner. Well, I used to be. And he asked me to run with him in the mornings before work. 
The deferential to authority part of me, because I'm Asian, thought that I had to say yes, because my boss told me to. But I think if it were my non-Asian colleagues, they'd probably automatically see this as a professional opportunity. Well, we got to know each other on our daily runs. We also got in pretty good shape. And we also talked business, and he gave me feedback on how I was doing, and I learned so much from this seasoned professional. He was my mentor and my sponsor, and it was accidental. The Ascend study pointed out that we're at a disadvantage at the workplace because we have a gap in role models. Research suggests that minorities and women get much less feedback than others, a cost of the glass ceiling. So take time out to mentor and sponsor young people, especially young Asian Americans. If you are new to the professional world, seek out feedback wherever you can. Look for mentors. They don't even have to look like you because feedback is a gift and can only make you better. You see what you need to work on and what you're good at. One of the best bits of advice I got from one of my mentors as a young person was to speak up and speak out. That's what I hired you for, she said. So we need to tell our young people, if they can do it, why can't we? Some of the mentoring programs that we have at Comcast are to help low-income Asian American youth in Philadelphia to have those kinds of mentors and sponsors. It's been incredibly inspiring to be with these young people because they have looked at us with the starry eyes and the dreams that, a, that reality could hold for them. Finally, I know that the Michigan chapter, Michigan Chamber is among the first MOU partners of the Asian Pacific Islander American Chamber of Commerce and Entrepreneurship, or ACE. Participation in ACE's legislative agenda is critical. Their areas include developing opportunities for AAPI small businesses, engaging more AAPIs in trade and commerce, supporting immigration policies that help grow AAPI businesses and keep families together, and increasing opportunities for us in the workplace. These are all incredibly important objectives, and I would like to highlight that on May 25th in Washington, D.C., ACE will host the first ever summit for AAPI business community members hosted by the Department of Commerce. We would love to see you there at this historic event. Be at the table. The AAPI community in this country and in this city has enormous potential. Let us work together to grow our political power and to mine the gap that exists between us and further success. We are a conglomeration of many Asian Pacific Islanders countries and cultures, but we need to unify as one community of people who will rise up and take their shot collectively. As is sung in the magnificent Broadway production, Hamilton, immigrants, we get the job done. So let's do this. Thank you so much.